Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway on this edition of the KSO Show. It is your weekly recruiting update as we go over everything going on with K State football and basketball recruiting. A uh, couple of big time commit, well, ones of commit. One is just uh, somebody that K State would hope would be a commit. Uh, when all is said and done, we'll be in town this weekend and a lot of other good things going on with the first football game of the year. Also, you got certain guys that are recruits that have either already started their season or will be starting them this weekend. Then some other guys will be starting them next week. Uh, a, a hectic time in the recruiting world and uh, some other notes and intel to get to from Drew. But before we do that, a good time to remind everybody that we are now less than a year away from K-State going over to Ireland, and you can join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So good reminder for everybody that uh, we do sit here less than a year away uh, from K-State and Iowa State in Ireland. But let's get on with some guys. That, who knows? They could be on the team next season. One of those K-State is hoping is uh, as we dive in with our recruiting update for this week and Lincoln Cure, the top commit in the class for K-State, one of only a handful of five stars throughout the country, will be in attendance this weekend for K-State's game. He's already interacted uh, on social media with A.J. DeBonza, who will also be there. Uh, so, Drew, with two five stars in attendance right now, uh, can you, in the time that you've been doing this, remember a recruiting weekend that would rival uh, this one in terms of the amount of talent that will be in Manhattan uh, on Saturday? Honestly, probably not. Like, uh, the only one that I saw that would be kind of close was uh, those 2007 football games, getting ready for that that Michael Beasley class uh, that people have kind of talked about. But that I was nine years old at that point, so I, I honestly couldn't tell you a, a dang thing from any of that. So uh, it, it'll be a massively talented weekend at K-State. Kind of get the added advantage of Kansas high school football doesn't start until the following week. So you kind of get to see, I anticipate most of the local commits will be there. We've already kind of touched on some 2026 guys that will be there. And that, that's all in a thread uh, on KSO. Um. So it's going to be a big weekend, and I think that it's something that shouldn't go unnoticed. And, I mean, we we were kind of talking about it uh, on Monday. I was like, huh, should probably make recruit of the week DeBonza, you know, because it's not often that the number one basketball player in the country comes and visits. So having him visit, Lincoln already being there, you get to see, like, the, the, syner the synergy, which I, again, say is at an all-time high at K-State with all of these other sports. Uh, with Lincoln going and tweeting at DeBonza saying, see you there. Uh, also kind of another uh, poking the stick a little bit at the Oregon and all the rumors that were out there that he might visit Oregon at some point this season, even though he has kind of said that he doesn't even know where those rumors even came from. So, well, we, we have picked up uh, over the last couple of months of having to follow along and loosely interact with Oregon media here. Um, they they let their feelings be known in a lot of these uh, recruiting situations, and I think they think they have the power to will some of this stuff to happen. So, you know, you throw a couple things out here and there, and it's like, I don't know that you really understand what's going on here. Uh, and that that, to me, seems like, that's probably what went down with the uh, the Oregon rumors. That, that that's kind of the vibe that I got. Uh, I mean, I sent you guys the the screenshot from uh, one of the Oregon writers that said there's no doubt about who will have the better season between K State and Oregon. And I kind of thought, yeah, because K State might go eleven and one. So that that's 
it's probably the better season. Yeah, I mean, they'll be, uh, I don't know, I think Oregon will be pretty good, but to just assume, like, I think the way that it gets talked about in Oregon circles is they think Oregon's going to be national champions and K-State's going to be like seven and five or something, um, when that certainly is not the case. It's it's fascinating seeing the mindset of how it's going, but yeah, uh, these two five stars will be in attendance. Lincoln Cure will be there, and then A.J. DeBonsa on the basketball side. Uh, will be in attendance, kind of getting to see what everything is like. Uh, D.Y. and I talked about it a little bit yesterday because that's one of the headlines of this week. I mean, probably more exciting for some than the actual football game that's going to take place is having the top basketball recruit in attendance and seeing if K-State can make any headway there or if they're probably just going to be in a position of – uh, not able to make up enough ground to to get Debonza on board, but this is a good start. We'll see how it goes, and uh, worth noting that he will be in attendance. Uh, in terms of guys visiting, I know that uh, if people really need to know the whole list, they can go over to KSO, and you do a great job of tra- tracking uh, which guys are visiting for what weekend. But is there anybody else notable that uh, we know will be in Manhattan this weekend on the football side that stands out to you? Uh, let's keep the the tight end train rolling along. Uh, K State has done a really good job at the position in the last three classes, and looks like they're going to really take another big swing in the twenty twenty six class with Great Ben tight end Ian Bremer, and he'll be back in Manhattan. And that's a big deal uh, because he is probably the top target at the position. He's already ranked a four star. He's going to be in that contention. There's not a lot of separation right now between that one, two, three, and four players in the state in the 2026 class right now, but he's going to be in contention to be in that number one spot. Uh, also a hell of a basketball player. If you've, if you've turned on the tape there, uh, but that, that's, that's a big deal. And another in state kid, another in state tight end. I, I don't think that it's a coincidence that you'll probably see him and Lincoln be talking a lot. Uh, when I was in Salina for the Sharp Combine, the two of them were like this the whole time. So I anticipate that kind of being how it goes on Saturday afternoon, evening as well. With uh, with everything that's gone on with the tight end situation the last couple of years, and we've discussed how loaded Kansas has been in producing that position, uh, what? why is it that that position has become something that is – kind of a hotbed here in Kansas where they've produced this high-end talent for those guys? You know, that, that's a good question. And it's it's one that I'd like to really do a deep dive in. But I, the thing that kind of has stuck with me with you look back at Will Ancio and you look at Gavin Hoffman and Lincoln Cure and Ian Primer, the, the one thing that they all really kind of have in common is the basketball background. And I wonder if it's just that athleticism translating from one to the other, because all four of those guys, really good basketball players. Yeah, it's just interesting the way that it's uh, been able to work out for the state. And uh, obviously, K-State has kind of uh, reaped the benefits of that. Uh, When it comes to football recruiting, it's been, uh, I don't know, the exact amount of days since uh, K-State has gotten a commitment on that side. And look, it's not like, they're hurting for them right now. They got to a really good number by the end of the summer with 17. Um, but when do you think we could see the next commitment for K-State football? I would not be shocked if there is a commitment, probably not on Sunday, but like in that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday range. At some point next week, I anticipate K-State at least getting one in the 2025 class, if not two. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably good news. Is there, now that we sit here and it's been, I guess, what was, was Ashton Moore the last commit then? Uh, the the last one was, uh, Logan Bartley. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess he was the end of July. Uh, now that we sit here and it's been almost a month since the last commit. So time to let that 17 number breathe. Do you have an updated kind of thought or goal for what the total number of commits in this class ends up looking like uh from the high school ranks i'm gonna say probably around 21 nothing real like set in stone just kind of thinking about what else will be added uh another linebacker not out of the question because darren whitaker is 
just so good and so athletic that he could play linebacker, D-hand, or even potentially safety. Um, another wide receiver I know is something that is a want slash a need in this, uh, this these remaining few months. Uh, defensive end. And then we'll just kind of see on defensive tackle. I kind of get the vibe that it's going to be more along the Juco or transfer route. So we'll see, but that would probably be the other one. And then offensive line. So 21, 22. That's uh, it's good that you bring up the defensive tackle. Cause that was one of the other things that I wanted uh, to ask you about today is the kind of the strategy there. And you made this known to us that you think that might be the way that they go moving forward. We've already seen that kind of be the case where they tried Javon Banks, a Mississippi state transfer last year, but yeah, you know, that was one where they were really you were really squinting to see it because he had been more of what a defensive end at, at Mississippi State, and he just he couldn't add the weight that they needed him to add to be a true defensive tackle. Uh, and so then this time around, we see Malcolm Alcorn Crowder come in from the junior college ranks, and it just seems like that that might be the approach moving forward. And I think more than anything. Some of this has to do with K-State getting a little behind the eight ball in that one position uh, because we know that there was a giant hole left after Eli Huggins was gone. It's like you had him for all those years, and so then you kind of forgot, oh, no, what, we need somebody here. Uh, but I also think that a big, big part of that position and, and the way that this approach might move going forward is that it's probably a lot easier to get guys that you think can work for you at D-Tackle because they're for the most part, already close to the size that you need where, I mean, that's a lot of these high school defense tackles. You're probably going to have to do a lot of growth and development for, um, wh what is it in your head that you, that makes you go, okay, this approach makes sense for K-State to focus more on transfers and Juco guys, uh, for defensive tackle moving forward. Yeah, I think that you hit it on the head. I, I called it like a, a transactional move where you, really take a guy that you know has the size and has the capability to play right away and you take him and you just kind of run with it uh, because defensive tackle, and this isn't just a case eight thing. This is just kind of across the board thing. It's one of the hardest positions to recruit and you have a lot more misses. It feels like at defensive tackle because you can't get somebody up to the weight or you aren't sure about the ability going forward long-term than a lot of other positions. So I think that it's an interesting move. It's a move that is going to be tough because, I mean, we've talked about this in some of the transfer portal videos that defensive tackle is also one of the most expensive positions in the transfer portal. So do you find a junior college guy or two? But I think it's all about having a guy that is ready to play and has multiple years, and you don't necessarily have to do all of the developing for like you do at the high school level. Yeah. Uh, it'll be fascinating to see how K-State approaches it and what names kind of pop up along the way. Uh, you mentioned also some of the other you know, late names that might pop up looking for certain positions. Just to give everybody an idea, at what point in the season do you think those become more known and we can start to kind of hone in on guys? Because we've seen uh, various positions over the last couple of years when uh, it just the recruitment moves along pretty fast and gets done quickly after – popping on the radar. What is kind of the timeline for, you know, if that last receiver of the class, where if it's a new name to everybody, where does the, you know, the contact point start? And then when does the recruitment finish? What does that timeline look like? My guess is that uh, an offer for a guy at one of those positions would probably go out like late September, early October. And then you hopefully get an official visit and that either the KU game or like the Arizona State or Cincinnati game. And then you just kind of go from there. And uh, because you probably want to see three or four games of tape uh, with some of these guys that you're offering during the middle of the, their season. So I wouldn't expect a ton of offers to go out like right away, but probably like late September, maybe before, like during that bye week in October, you'll probably see a coach or two go out and see a person live. And then you kind of get the you see an offer go out from that too. Yeah, I just uh, I was asking. I like I like when we're able to give uh, you the floor to to make people. I mean, I'm like it, give them a better understanding of uh, how the recruiting world works because there's so many little intricacies that are that are there with it, 
and uh, you certainly are able to provide a, I want you to give people realistic expectations and uh, understanding of how this thing works. So uh, that's. I'll, I'll also point out that you will see more 2026 offers come out sooner than 2025. Like I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if there are some 2026 players that are there on Saturday that ended up getting offered and kind of you see their recruitment uh, develop uh, before another 2025 name pops up. Okay. Good to know. Uh, maybe we start doing this. Uh, I, I'll let, I'll let you choose it if you want. Uh, but in future weeks, we'll end every recruiting update with, uh, you can, you can kind of educate everybody and even me on uh, certain either recruiting topics or philosophies or anything about the, the way that recruiting works. So everybody out there watching this, uh, at the end of the day that maybe doesn't understand just some of the details that go into it. Uh, is is no because like the, a, a great point of this is something that a lot of people probably don't realize or understand. But you mentioned people talking in one of the threads about Debonsa visiting and uh, you know if if it would help or if it could be announced in stadium that you know he's there visiting or whatever. And and that's a no no. Like these these schools and staffs they're not allowed to to talk about individuals or say their name or whatever. Uh, until they are signed, which is why I can I told you I can understand why some people have the confusion because sometimes during basketball you will see, hey, this is a, a K State recruit that is is committed and all that. That's because the signing period is already passed for basketball, and so those guys are signed. So, like I think it happened for David Castillo for a game yes. last year uh, that he was at, and they showed him up there. Um, that's why it can happen for basketball. It can't happen for football. Uh, because they don't sign until December. So that's uh, just a little bit of insight there. So little stuff like that. Uh, it's also the same reason why, you know, when if somebody asks about recruiting to coaches, they kind of tense up and uh, answer it in a really funny way. It's because they can't, they can't say, oh, yeah, we've got this awesome tight end from Goodland, Kansas named Lincoln Cure that's going to be a wildcat. Um, they just have to be like, oh, yeah, it's gone pretty good, you know, and you, you can't say anything about specific guys. So uh, that's just another little one of those odd things. Is it stupid? Yes. it's It seems like a very stupid rule uh, by the NCAA, but it's a rule that they have, and so you got to follow them. And that would be my lesson to everybody today is that, yes, rules can be stupid, but if they are rules, you have to abide by them. And if you break them just because you broke a stupid rule, doesn't mean you didn't break a rule, uh, which is kind of how the whole you know NCAA penalty situation ends up working out. Is everybody's like your rules are really stupid, and some people are like we agree, but we're not going to break them. And then others are like screw that, stupid rules meant to be broken. Uh, so yeah, it's I, I think oh. of that with I see people jumping on and defending Connor Stallions now. I'm like he didn't do anything wrong. What's you know he was just smarter than everybody else. It's like well. You know, they know that he was in person and organizing in person scouting, which is not allowed. So that's just that, my that, little tangent. That that documentary is also a lot of propaganda. Like yeah, all of all of all of those are. So like it, it obviously made him look better than he actually was. Just, well, the, the other one that I thought was kind well, of funny. you can't really do like a like a real uh journalistic documentary when the turnaround on these on these things that Netflix is cranking out, these untold documentaries are like nine months after stuff. Like, you know, the other things you could make sense. Like they did Manti Teo, they did Johnny Manziel. Like that's 12 years after the fact of that happening or whatever. Connor Stallions, we didn't know who the heck this guy was until like mid October last year. And then you think nine months is enough time to be figuring out. Yeah, this is, it's crazy. But uh, the, the other funny one that uh, I've seen today or not just today, but just this week was uh, Oklahoma not allowed to do unofficial visits this weekend, even though they play on a Friday <laughs> that like they, they weren't going to have a lot of unofficial visits anyway. But with the DeMarco Murray situation, they're uh, not allowed. To, they're not allowed to have unofficial visits this weekend in the 2026 or 2027 classes. And everybody's just like, yeah, it's a Friday night. And I think that Oklahoma high school football starts on Friday. So, well, <laughs> awesome. Great, great job there. That's a, a fun little, little punish, punishment there that I'm sure they'll take that. Uh, yes. 
that Oklahoma football does indeed start for high schools this Friday. Well, that's, so. really, that's really going to hurt Oklahoma. Yeah, the, all three kids that go to the home school would have been there in attendance. So awesome stuff. All right, well, that will do it for today's recruiting update. Uh, Drew will be back next week with another one of these to educate everybody as well. And like Drew alluded to earlier, there might be some fireworks coming early next week, maybe even by the end of this weekend. So if it does happen, your first place to go should be on three, find K-State online, get all the info you need on who committed and how it went down. And then you can find Drew and I right here on the KSO YouTube giving breakdowns on each and every K-State football and basketball commit when they happen. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching today's episode of the KSO Show. Back again tomorrow, D.Y. and I will discuss what we heard from Joe Klanderman and Connor Riley in their first in-season press conferences of the year. Both of those will be able to be found on the KSO YouTube page as well. Then Friday, it's time to get ready for K-State and UT Martin. The full KSO show preview will be there. We are out of here today. Back again tomorrow. See you later.